I'm Zoe de la Handy Light, and I don't know about you, but it feels like we're in the middle of a triple A drought. Even if the big boys might be lacking at the moment, there are so many fascinating other games coming out that I promise you deserve your attention. From tense horror games to whimsical adventures to an organisational one that's so satisfying it genuinely gives me shivers. All of these come out either in 2022 or 2023, and a bunch at the end have their release dates yet to be announced, but I just had to get them in there to get them on your radar. Let's begin. Here are 11 non-AAA games you need to know about. Madison comes out on the 8th of July 2022, and it's a creepy one. What sets this apart from other psychological horror games is that you use an instant camera to solve puzzles and survive, because what's a horror game without an unhealthy dose of danger? It takes inspiration from PT, with corridors winding through a dilapidated 1920s family home, a claustrophobic atmosphere, and uncomfortably up-close encounters with… something in the shadows. The visuals are gorgeous, and as it's part of the Guerrilla Collective showcase, hopefully that's a sign that there's more to Madison than chase sequences and jump scares. <laughs> Releasing into early access on the 26th of August 2022, Gloomwood is almost here and that makes me so happy because it looks sick. Confined inside a cursed Victorian city, this has Blades in the Dark written all over it and harkens back to games like Thief, as you become an assassin slash doctor slash stealthy outsider who's just trying to get out of the city alive. Designed to evoke the aesthetics of games from the late 90s, Gloomwood's world is full of splutters and coughs from its cursed inhabitants, the strange and eerie, and a dash of steampunk. With a huge range of traps, tools, and weapons at your disposal, this is a game for anyone who is patient and thirsts for a new strategic take on the stealth genre. This is the game that I am most excited for on this list. Coming in November 2022, Autopsy Simulator is fairly self-explanatory. You perform autopsies. Along with figuring out how the person on your table died, you undertake incredibly accurate post-mortems in the stainless steel comfort of the mortuary. Each case has been designed with the help of real-life pathomorphologists and forensic doctors, so when you're elbow deep in someone's chest cavity, you can trust it's for a good reason. If you want pure facts, then there's a free play autopsy only mode, but the meat of the game is in Autopsy Simulator Dead Memories. That chunk of the game is a self-contained, narrative-driven psychological horror experience set in 1990s New Orleans where you play Jack, whose past has come back in the most unexpected of ways. I've given the demo of Autopsy Simulator a go and had an unforgettable time as it was so refreshing how in-depth the autopsy itself was and you could feel the devs' attention to detail. This is a must for anyone into the more grisly side of life and death. Pentiment is also out in November 2022 and comes from the folks at Obsidian, but it's nothing like the Outer Worlds, as you can see. This is a unique medieval detective game, with you playing an artist who has to figure out exactly who is behind the nefarious deeds going on in his town. Pick between academic and social backgrounds that will determine the kinds of choices you can make and affects how you navigate the world with a deep narrative that promises to enthrall. Pentiment is truly unlike anything I've seen before, and as Obsidian have a promising track record in terms of storytelling with New Vegas and Outer Worlds, this is definitely one that anyone who enjoys Disco Elysium and medieval murder should keep an eye out for. Calling everyone who watches those organisational TikToks, me included, a little to the left is your next satisfying tidying fix, especially if you've been hearkening for a successor to Unpacking. Little to the left is out this year, and while it isn't made by the minds behind Unpacking, it scratches the same itch. You tidy up a house and solve puzzles to put everything in its rightful place, with a devious, smug but adorable cat occasionally messing up your neat endeavours. Whether that's organising keys by size, putting stickers off of fruit or tidying a stack of books, a little to the left is the perfect Sunday game, and I cannot wait to relax with a cup of tea, my cat, and a little to the left by my side.
Moving on to games coming out in 2023, let's start with Ravenloft. Available for your perusal on day one via Games Pass, this coming-of-age adventure RPG looks simply delightful. Looking like a twist on Alice in Wonderland, Ravenlock follows Ravenlock, the eponymous protagonist, as she fights through this fantastical kingdom to defeat the Caterpillar Queen and a whole host of intriguing but definitely deadly monsters. The sheer range in environments and aesthetics is bewildering in the best kind of way, with vibrant colours strewn across the screen in every frame and bright, bold action. If you've played Echo Generation, then you'll be interested to know that it comes from the same developers, and if not, I'd still bookmark Ravenlock if you're in need of a Psychonaut-like adventure. Flintlock has all the good keywords. Action, adventure, RPG, and finally, open world. Arriving in early 2023 and available on Games Pass as soon as it releases, Flintlock looks like an intriguing mix of gunplay, magic and melee combat, exploration and strange twisted foes. With the undead walking the land, you battle against this tide of rot and the gods who rule over the shambling forces. By your side in this adventure is Enki, a magical creature who has their own reasons for hating the gods. Flintlock's combat and story sounds pretty generic at the moment, I'll be honest, but its aesthetic is novel and I'm willing to hold judgement until I get my hands on it. Escapism, in its most cyberpunk form, is on offer in Nivalis, which has yet to announce a release date. In the neon-soaked streets of Nivalis, you manage your own business, whether that's a restaurant, ramen stand or nightclub, buying or growing your own ingredients to use in such endeavours. Alongside your business of choice, you have your own home to decorate, and when you're done with decorating and building your domestic and professional sphere, you can explore the city, getting to know its inhabitants, or indulging in a spot of fishing. Nivalis looks absolutely bewitching at the moment, and the only thing I'm on the lookout for now is a gameplay trailer, as I'm pretty much sold on Nivalis already. No, this isn't Morrowind, this is Dread Delusion. Doesn't it look amazing? Using the graphics of the late 90s as inspiration, just like Gloomwood, Dread Delusion is an open-world RPG about magic, secrets, and peril. So far, we don't have a release date for this early access build, which will hopefully change soon, as this ticks every box for Elder Scrolls fans, especially those who always play mages, like me. Mind you, you don't have to touch combat or Dread Delusion's honed magic in its quests if you don't want to, with there being plenty of other ways to tackle those who would harm you, whether that's through charm, lockpicking, or using a bit of secret knowledge to your advantage. I've already added Dread Delusion to my Steam wishlist, and if you want to be kept updated about the game, make sure to subscribe to Eurogamer, as I will be making videos about it once more gameplay is released. Paralives, its release date yet to be announced, is for every single one of you who have played The Sims and wished for just a little bit more. Its style is whimsical and fresh without being cloyingly sweet, and the character creation doesn't lean on gender when it comes to body types, so you can create someone who exactly represents your preferred identity. Alter your muscle definition and height, with tattoos not only being a thing in the game but also adjustable, and there's also a huge amount of freedom about where you place them. Clothes have customizable colour and pattern options too. As for building your home, you can bend walls, alter the height of floors, distort windows and furniture to be any size you want, and finally, customise the colour of pretty much anything. I need this game. Once Paralives is out, you might even want to ditch The Sims for good. I know I might. Another game from the Gorilla Collective, The Fridge is Red doesn't have a release date yet, so my nightmares can't dine on it. For now, at least. An anthology of analogue horror stories with a psychological twist, The Fridge is Red is made up of multiple episodes inspired by the analogue horror of the PS1, as you can probably tell from the aesthetic. Every episode is first person and promises to experiment with gameplay ideas, featuring liminal spaces, surreal encounters and strange strangers. It looks unsettling so far and is another horror game that connoisseurs of the genre should keep tabs on. At the moment, there's a free demo you can subject yourself to if you can't wait for the full release, but be warned, the fridge might come back to haunt you. And 
and that's 11 upcoming video games that aren't AAA that you should keep an eye out for. What ones are you most interested in and are there any others you think should be on the list? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, thanks very much and don't forget to like and subscribe to Eurogamer as we have a new video out every single day. Now I'm going to go and watch the Autopsy Simulator trailer again because ironically I just want it in my veins, so I'll see you next time.